Hello YouTube and welcome to a new video, this time about the Thalmor. Before we begin, I have already talked a great deal about the Thalmor and all the other information within this video. So, just so that I won't repeat myself, please make sure you've watched the following videos before you even start on watching this video. I will put them all in the description. I do this so I'm not constantly repeating myself in every single video because my channel is going mostly in the direction of like 4th era lore and empire, dominion lore, etc. I'm also doing the other things of course, but <laughs> certainly when I'm talking about those things, it's always nice when people already have their information based. So please watch those, it, they're interesting watches from as far as I've heard from my community. So go watch them, I won't wait for you, as we will start with the video. So put on your lore hats and reclaim the holy land, so we can start with this video. The Thalmor, first and foremost, are not the same term as either the High Elves or the Altmeri Dominion. While most people already know this, there is a substantial amount of people that still struggle with keeping them apart for some reason. The Thalmor are a political party, and they are the rulers over the Altmeri Dominion, a country or a strategic empire. The High Elves are the inhabitants of the Somerset Isles, which is part of the Altmeri Dominion, which is governed by the Thalmor. Got it so far? Good. So we know now that the Thalmor are the political party ruling over the Altmeri Dominion, but what sort of government is this? Well first we will need to delve into some history for this. The name Thalmor itself existed far before Skyrim, even far before the Mede and the Septim empires. The Thalmor faction has been in the government of the Somerset Isles for centuries, even existing in the late second era. They were always a sort of, well, unimportant party in the Somerset Isles. An extremist minority party, a bit like the Nazi party in Germany before it rose. They have always been immense elven supremacists, seeing all our races of Myrrh superior to men and seeing the High Elves as superior to the other Myrrh races, or elven races. Again, here we can again draw some sort of parallel with the Nazi ideology, since they too had ideas of races being superior to other races. As I said, they were always a minority. They are, this however ended after the Oblivion Crisis. Before the Oblivion Crisis they were always ridiculed and not accepted by mainstream Altmeri culture which for their fruitless efforts against imperial control. They have actually been known to do small scale boycotts of the imperial government before the Oblivion Crisis. And when the Oblivion Gates opened the Somerset Isles were completely overrun. No place was deemed safe anymore. The last bastion of the Somerset armies was the Crystal Tower, the legendary structure of Erlenor. This last stand of the High Elves proved fruitless as the tower eventually fell and actually was destroyed by the Daedric invaders. But when the Oblivion Gates closed and the Daedric threat ended by the hands of the Martin Septim and the Hero of Kvarch, actually mere moments before the Crystal Tower fell, the armies of Daedra vanished. And before the news of Martin's sacrifice had reached the Somerset Isles, the Thalmor had already claimed responsibility for this miracle. The people of the Somerset Isles knew nothing else than the Thalmor that saved them, and this gave the Thalmor actually substantial influence in the Somerset Isles, so much even that with anyone even prominent figures dare to doubt their influence in the ending of the crisis, they managed to turn the public opinion on this person, and usually had those people executed in the end, or assassinated. The Thalmor then became a huge power within the Somerset government, and while the Empire was recovering under potentate Oketo, the Thalmor used this chaos in the Empire to send an envoy to Black Marsh and spark the Argonians to get into an uprising against the imperial government and attack Morrowind. This happened and Black Marsh gained independence as Argonia and conquered southern Morrowind. This event however was somehow made the Argonians also resent the Thalmor, probably because the Thalmor promised the Argonians something that they ultimately not deliver on. However, this is speculation as we know that from this point, this point Black Marsh under the Ansa Heel hate the Empire and the Thalmor equally, even though the Thalmor has somehow helped them, but there's not much information on this. Meanwhile, the Thalmor tried to gain the full power over the Somersets, but they were not that successful since the upper class and the ruling classes did not actually fall for their claim that they were the one that stopped the Oblivion Crisis, since these classes had actually been in constant contact with the Imperial government during the crisis and after the crisis, and High Chancellor Oketo 
or now potentate, okay, its own ruling over the empire, actively fought the Thalmor over grip of power in the Somerset Isles. More about this and Oketo himself, of course, in one of the videos that's in the description. Actually, the Thalmor and the High Elves video. Oketo, however, was assassinated by the Thalmor. And thus, the last real opponent of the Thalmor was no more. And the Empire was actually completely lost and dissolved into infighting. More about that in the Mead Dynasty video that's also in the description. Truly watch it. It gives an understanding of the complete chaos of the Empire and in what... and Tamriel in itself. And it actually gives a good insight into from what chaos the Empire rose again and the, th and the Thalmor came to be. So the infighting in the Empire and the vanishing of the Imperial authority by the death of uh, Ponsendate okay, Okaito enabled the Thalmor to kill all the kings and queens of the Somerset Isles and establish total power with, with public opinion actually still by their sides. This is once again sort of compar uh, comparable to, to Nazi Germany as history buffs of you will know. The Thalmor renamed the Somerset Isles into Alanor then, and quickly proclaimed it their nation, or the state of Alanor. They also quickly publicly executed all humans, Khajiits and Argonians on the Somerset Isles, as they completely tried to brainwash the Altmer population. So this that did not actually make them lose much of a public opinion, since, since they had by that point already pretty much brainwashed the entire population of their racist ideology. It did however set in motion a huge refugee swarm of Altmer that actually did saw the light at this point and they realized they had to flee this madness of a regime. One of these refugee stories is actually told by Legate Fassendil of the Imperial Legion in Skyrim. He tells that during the rise of the Thalmor he was stationed in the city of he Sentinel in Hammerfell during the night of the Green Fire. He was there at the time trying to find some of his relatives who had fled the Somerset Isles to avoid persecution by the Thalmor. Those relatives had found their home in the refugee district of Sentinel. Suddenly, when he was posted there, there was a huge explosion of magic in the refugee quarter. Thalmor agents had killed all the Altmer refugees in cold blood, and when Fasendil and his comrades had arrived, none of the refugees remained. I think that this shows how far the Thalmor are willing to go to stay in total power, and it does give a good insight in what kind of regime that this actually is. The Empire was now again stabilizing due to the reign of Titus Mead I. See the media video on the Mead Dynasty for more details. However, this caused for the Thalmor to quickly overthrow the imperial backed government of Valenwood before the Empire could restore itself completely. This is the point that the true Tamrielic Cold War, as I call it, begins. As the Empire and the state of Eleanor fought a proxy war over Valenwood, with the new government backed by the Thalmor and the rebels in Valenwood getting a lot of aid from the new Mead Empire. In the book The Infernal City we actually learn that this proxy war actually continued into far of the fourth era and the Imperials kept supplying the, the Bosmer rebels and sending their agents into Valenwood. Unfortunately however the grip of Eleanor was too strong on the province and at some point between the year 40 and the year 171 the rebellion in Valenwood was rooted out by the Thalmor. During this period the Thalmor officially reformed Valenwood and Eleanor into the Old Mary Dominion, an elven superstate led by the High Elves, or specifically the Thalmor, as they still saw the Bosmer as disposable and less than the Aldmer, however higher than humans. During this time the Empire and the Dominion had a lot of conflict, just like the Cold War in our own universe. These were two blocks that were just monstrous powers. Emperor Titus Me the First actually said, of course the Thalmor are in on it, they are in everything these days. He said this while he was asked about a major problem within the Empire and this actually shows how much the Thalmor and the Empire are already at each other's throats. And this was in the year 40, so not even close to the Great War yet. Both the Empire and the Thalmor have deployed spies within each other's countries um, to get the upper hand over the other and they also had talks with Black Marsh. But as I said before that government was not inclined to support either of them because they hated pretty much the Empire and apparently also the Thalmor and they're more nationalist and isolationist not wanting to meddle themselves with international politics and just wanting to get shit straight in Black Marsh itself. The next step that the Thalmor took was, made, was the making of the two states of elsewhere their client states and Aquina and Palatine willingly became the client states of the Aldmeri Dominion after the Thalmor claimed they fixed the Void Knights, a period in which the two moons of Tamriel mysteriously disappeared. 
Of course, they probably were not the ones that made the moons come back, but the Thalmor have been known to use methods of lying against populations more often. Remember? The situation was then just plain out a spy war. Neither side, the Empire or the Dominion, dared to do anything against the other until they would get a significant advantage. The Blades and the Penitus Oculatus for the Empire spied within the Dominion and the Dominion spied within the Empire. The Penitus Oculatus had, th had even Thalmor studies as a subject within their training program, as a specialization uh, subject. This situation continued like this until the Thalmor had gained the upper hand in the spy war and had killed almost every imperial spy, mostly blades, within the dominion after years upon years of spy war. This is the moment that the Thalmor came with the ultimatum to the emperor, more on that in the Mead Dynasty video. When the emperor refused the great war, then the great war happened and as we all know it ended in a draw or tie, I don't really know the English word with massive casualties on both sides. Both armies completely destroyed. So instead of analyzing the war, I would like to analyze its effects within the Somerset Isles, or at least speculate them. You see, before the, the, the war, the Thalmor had a lot of support within the Somerset Isles. Probably not many High Elves he heard much of the war, and as supposedly most Bosmer and Khajiits were in the army. And the, the High Elves themselves were probably like commando units and commanders and generals and not really like the foot soldiers since the High Elves were the superior race uh, again, uh, according to the Thalmor and had to live like gods or something. But then a massive destruction of their armies after Red Ring and the Hammerfell campaign. The, those armies were gone. Suddenly to get their armies back the citizens of Alinor, so the High Elves would have to go into forced military service and probably also forced breeding since High Elves and Bosmer also breed very slow and due to their long lifespans. This is however not a very sustainable scenario for a civilization that just lost all their soldiers. So I think that if we extrapolate this situation with the forced breeding and forced military service and of course the huge economic damage of a lost war because for the Thalmor this is as much a lost war as for the Imperials. I mean they were counting on the fact that they would overthrow the Empire and would now be ruling over the Empire itself but instead they lost all their armies. I mean they still were doing better than the Empire because the, the Empire was the one that got their lands destroyed and the Thalmor pretty, pretty much still had a, a good land but still they lost almost all their armies and a large chunk of their pop population so i think that the thalmor must have lost a lot of support within the dominion after the failure of the war and are probably now only in power because their dictatorial ruling style not really because the, th the high elves are still supporting them or anything this is something a lot of people do not really understand as they always claim that the empire has huge problems and of course it has problems. I mean, it's recovering from the war. It's been 30 years, but such a massive war isn't really recovered in 30 years. Certainly not when you're still in a sort of medieval age. But if you think that the Dominion is completely fine now and not dealing with internal problems, then you might not really see the full picture since, again, elves breed slower. And even when they, have, when they go into forced breeding, growing up as an elf is longer than growing up as a human since their lifespan is just longer. In post Great War Tamriel, I think the Thalmor rule is also quite un unstable and that there are probably a lot of internal resistance movements now going on in the Dominion. However, the Dominion is, even though it's internal it has internal problems, still very powerful. It has spies it can deploy anywhere and at this moment they are doing that. Just like before the Great War, plotting against the Empire, with both sides probably sending their spies over in the new Tamrielic Cold War. Anyway, I hope this was all clear. I'm going to end the video now. <laughs> Please watch the videos in the description before you ask any questions because I won't answer questions that have been answered in other videos, certainly when I put them in the description. I mean, I tend to forget to mention some things because I now know too much about this whole part of the fourth era and some things just seem logical to me, so please correct me on that. But also ask your questions after you've watched the uh, previous information videos because I go into a lot of depth there and the things that I pass over very quickly in this video. With that said, ask any remaining questions regarding the Thalmor in the comments as I will try to answer them all. Follow my Instagram and Discord there in the description, like, subscribe this video, uh, etc. Oh, 
And if you've seen all my videos and want to see more lore, and then I've got another good channel for you. Half-Baked Productions. I put a link to him also in the description. What they do is they read out the in-game books of Skyrim and also Morrowind etc. And just like a sort of audiobook. It's actually pretty neat for when you do not want to read them yourself. I admittedly used one of their videos in my uh, for my own info when my eyes could no longer stand the PC screen. I don't really know in what video that was but I met the guy on Discord and I was like oh wait I used your videos. <laughs> And he's also got a good a good video explain explaining the Godhead theory, if you're inter interested in that sort of thing. That's not really my part of the lore, but it's really interesting to look at it, because it's a good explanation of the theory itself. And again, I recommend to watch it. So, go to his channel. So, go view his channel, and I will see you, we'll see you guys in the next lore video, I would say. Bye bye!